Good morning, everybody. This is Cheryl Echeverry of Echeverry Travel, and this is Talk Travel with Cheryl. Welcome. Uh, over the last couple of years, the number one uh, theme or reason why people are traveling is for health and wellness. And many people don't know other than, yeah, I hear you talking about special needs and disability, and that doesn't affect me, but at your very travel is your one-stop shopping because I also specialize in health and wellness destinations, retreats, culinary, uh, sports, uh, as well as golf and, and scuba diving, which you, you know we put all together one happy package. And uh, whether it's for you and a spouse doing a romantic getaway, or you're doing a retreat, or a group of people does want to get away for one reason or another. We handle that and we do that on a worldwide destination. And over the last couple of months, and I started this at the beginning of the year, starting out with, of course, sandals and beaches, uh, my number one partner in the all inclusive industry, and their spas that they offer. And I'll be bringing them back to talk about the golf. Uh, golf options for clients. But I also spoke with St. Lucia and other just dis different destinations that you know, when you think of these destinations, you just think of health and wellness, like uh, uh, Thailand and uh, Tahiti and other things that bring in Hawaii that you think of when you're thinking of health and wellness. And today, I have a good friend and colleague on today. Her name is Miss Shannon Rollins, and uh, she, I'm very proud to say she does. She's been around in the industry for a while in health and wellness but she just opened her own clinic, clinic in health uh, hypnotherapy, and she's a speaker as well, and she does coaching. And a little bit about her bio here, she's a certified clinic hypnotherapist and professional speaker. She's worked in the health and wellness field for over 10 years as a wellness leader and coach. Uh, Shannon is deep, deeply passionate about helping people achieve inner peace and healing so they can reach their goals, whatever they really, whatever they may uh, be. Uh, again, uh, you know, it used to be funny in the old days, you think of hypnosis and you thought of the Bugs Bunny cartoons and taught, you know, you turned into a chicken or a magician. That is not hypnosis. That is just, a, a, you know, things that, you know, we, we take light of. But I'm proud to introduce Ms. Shannon Rollins and she'll explain what hypnosis therapy is and her business and how it affects you, especially when you're looking to do travel in the future. So here's my good friend, Ms. Shannon Rollins. Thank you, Shannon, for joining me today. I hope I gave you uh, good kudos there and didn't destroy any of your lovely work. <laughs> You did not. Oh my gosh, you explained it perfectly. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me on today because if there's one thing I'm most passionate about is travel. <laughs> if there's anything on the earth that I would love to do, it would be just be a worldwide traveler. And But, you know, I, I love what I do. I just love what I do. And so I know you touched a little bit on, on hypnotherapy and what it is and what it isn't. And, and I do get that question a lot. Like, is this a stage thing where you're going to make me do things I don't want to do? And I always tell people hypnotherapy is a professional clinical per profession. So, you know, I'm not a magician in Vegas or anything like that. Um, and what I really do is help to put people in hypnosis so they could bridge their subconscious mind and their conscious mind. And all hypnosis is, is a deeper brain wavelength. So we have our four brain waves of beta, alpha, theta, delta. Beta is us talking right now. And then alpha and theta, that's more when you're, you know, you're daydreaming as you you pass your exit on the highway or you're watching a show and you zone out. That's really when you're slipping into hypnosis and in, in your daily life. So we all do it. We all do it every single day, but it's just a matter of using it as a tool for healing and to be able to use that modality to really just help people get to the bottom of what's going on, why they're unhappy, why they have a bad habit, those types of things. 
So in what way does hypnosis help with dealing with bad habits, like whether it's smoking or whether it's losing weight? How, I, and, and I get it about that dream state. I think I do that a lot. Uh, especially do. being bored now during COVID and uh, being in the house a lot, you, your brain goes 50 million directions or it does get stuck in one area you're constantly thinking about it. But but how does that work when you're, you're, you're is it similar to just regular, uh, you know, therapy when somebody goes in to talk to a therapist about their problems or is it more in depth than that? Yeah, um, so it's a little more in depth than that. It always starts with talking, but something like weight loss or or smoking, like overeating, or you know, every time you get, every time we have these types of habits, it's because we're coping with something. So if we're just feeling really stressed, I grab for the cigarette when I feel really stressed. And what hypnotherapy does is it really helps you get to the core of the pro, to the bottom of it, the core of the problem and figuring out basically why are you choosing those behaviors? And usually the problem is not the problem. <laughs> so, gotcha. but yeah, the problem isn't the, the smoking, it's what is what are you doing to create that habit? And what are those ruminating thoughts in your subconscious mind, which could essentially be past events or just eliminating stress or even the confidence to do it especially for something like smoking or weight loss, both of those people have tried so many times to lose weight and so many times to quit smoking. And it usually takes a lot of times. And each time you fail, your confidence gets knocked down exactly. to the point where I have people say, I don't even know that I can do it. And so it's a matter of not only really getting to the bottom of what's going on, because if we're pushing our emotions and our beliefs deep down, then they manifest in other ways in our life. They manifest and they could manifest in physical illness or more commonly drinking, smoking, drugs, because that helps numb and, and helps someone cope with whatever they're going through. And so I always say, you know, especially burnout with work, I always relate that to travel because so many people, especially in our society, I know that you could definitely agree with this. What I've seen is we work and work and work and work and work until we're forced to take a vacation. Exactly. Like I have to do it. I have to earn my vacation. Or if I don't take it, I'll lose it kind of thing. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Or if, and then, you know, the, when you go on vacation, you feel the guilt because you think that you should be at home doing something else. So that's a common thread and theme that I see with people. And, uh, you know, I see that as well. It is proven that less than 10% of Americans take a vacation every year with their friends or family or even by themselves. And you need to get away from that work. You got to push, even when people are, are on vacation, they still have that cell phone or computer with them and they got to learn to break the habit to enjoy why they spent so much money to travel to these destinations. Uh, the other thing is, unfortunately, in this country, the number one cause of death, which is growing, is depression because with depression comes suicide or, or even when you have things like me, diabetes or heart disease, if you're depressed, uh, it can bring on a broken heart. I know that for a fact last week, my uncle passed away because my aunt and cousin both passed away a day from each other and he yeah. suffered heart disease and February is heart awareness month and I'm one year post the open heart surgery myself. Thank God I'm here. Uh, but yeah, depression has a very, uh, and then it's not just in women, men, kids, and unfortunately our children are, are number one prone to depression and to drugs and bad influences when it comes to depression and more and more people are seeking out alternative ways to cope to cope whether it's hypnosis or or any other kind of uh therapy to overcome that depression so i'm glad we have people like shannon in our uh, realm of people whether it's central florida or not to reach out to and to work with um question for you what what made you go into the hypnotherapy i know you've been in health and wellness for years but what why the hypnotherapy reach a uh, reign of that 
Yeah, so I had, um, when I was doing corporate wellness, I was working with people on just behavior change in general, because my background was health behavior and psychology. And so I was helping people create behavior change and I was coaching them and really helping them along the way. And then over time, they would come back and say, I didn't do it. I didn't follow through. Like I lost the weight and then I gained it back. Mm -hmm. I started an exercise program and I couldn't do it. I started trying to drink water and it never happened. And I always ask myself the question, like there has to be something deeper. There is always something deep. Like I want to get to the root of this and the core of the problem. And so I had researched hypnosis in the past. And then um, this last year, I actually had a loss of a family member to mental health. And so I was researching from a grief standpoint. um, And I know, so sorry for your losses. I know that just is so difficult, um, such a difficult time. And, And so I was researching, okay, what can I do to not speed up the process, right? Because the loss is always there. The loss is always going to be there. But what can I do to gain like a different perspective or just to help so I can help my family members? And I looked at, you know, a bunch of different type of therapies. And I was like, you know what? I want to go alternative. (laughs) And so the wonderful world of Google, I found um, a really great hypnotherapist. Um, Gosh, I want to say, I don't even remember how long. Um, but I found a really great hypnotherapist. And after my first session, I walked out and I just knew this is what I meant to do because I was searching. I was looking, searching, trying to find the answers of, man, what is my path? I know this isn't it, but I'm almost there. I knew, you know, when you're almost somewhere and you're oh, like, oh yeah, I've been there a few like, times. And like, of, that's why I love what I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, oh, I'm almost there. I almost got it. And then when I walked out, I was like, this is it. I know, like I'm here now. So that's what got me into it. And Cheryl, I mean, if you asked me this 10 years ago, I would have laughed. If you, if you told me that I would be doing this 10 years ago, I would have completely laughed in your face. I would have been like, no way. I could never do that. Something like that. Well, let's take a little bit deeper into the hypnosis area. When, yeah. when you're working with your clients, and, and of course, I'm not going to actually mention your clients because it's HIPAA privacy and all that. Do you yeah. recommend also that they reach out to their primary care or doctor to work with you? Or is this something that they don't need to do? So that's a great question. I'm happy you asked that. It depends on what you're coming to me for. Um, There are a couple keys where I always say I would like a script from the doctor, whoever you saw, whoever diagnosed you. If you have chronic diagnosed anxiety, if you're diagnosed with depression or pain management, the reason that I have referrals for those is because I also need direction from the person who diagnosed them. So all it is, is a, you know, it's very easy to get a script um, from most of these providers, but they just have to write a hypnosis for X, Y, Z. Those are the only three things, something like, um, something like smoking, weight loss, stuff like that. No, I don't, I don't need anything for that. They could just come to me. Um, And then I always support other types of support systems, right? If someone is coming to me for weight loss and a great fit for them might be, you know, a a chef, someone who meal preps, I don't do this. So I'll refer them. I have all the resources to help them get the well-rounded care that they need based on what they're going through what issue they're trying to deal with. And, and I know you work with a great friend of ours as well, Dr. Sid Cherise yes. Williams, and I plan to have her on in the future as well. Right. But you just moved your office in, well, is it her building or inside her office it's, itself? Where exactly is your your yeah. office now? Is that Yeah, there? I well, first of all, I love it. <laughs> I've only been there for two weeks and it's actually in a room inside her. So her office has like, five or six rooms. I can't remember five or six rooms, something like that. And so I'm in a room inside her office space. Um, So it's great because, you know, she is a great complimentary asset to what I do. Mm -hmm. And so it's great to have 
someone like her and her expertise under the same roof because then we know that we can get someone that well-rounded care that they need exactly and and that's good to know and i i love the passion you have and the smile in your face when you're talking about what you what you're doing a lot of people uh don't are not there or they have a job that they you know it's just a nine to five job they go they come home they pay the bills but uh, I'm so glad that I know people like you that I can refer to or recommend that said this person really loves what she does and involved and mm -hmm. just won't give up on you and just make sure that you know you're getting what you need and advice versus just giving you a script and taking a pill and, and that's all you need to do and yeah. I think that's very important to stay day and age as well. Um, Prior to, like you said, prior to hypnosis, you were doing business, corporate health and wellness. What, what were you doing in, in what forms? And was that more physical or is that more of what you're doing now? But it was more like coaching and stuff. It was more coaching and more physical. So my background with the health and like health and wellness and behavior was also an exercise physiology. That was my minor. So I was always doing physical and I loved it, but to me it was skimming the surface of what I really wanted to get to. Um, so I really helped people. Well, I helped companies create wellness programs for their employees. And what I actually found, if anyone's listening who works for corporate, <laughs> uh, the EAP programs, the behavioral health programs that businesses have for employees are very underutilized um, for various reasons. And so the other reason why I wanted to go into this field is because I wanted us to look at mental well being a different way, look at it like preventative care, look at it like an exercise regimen, but for your brain. Because if we're looking more preventatively at it and you know, clearing whatever comes up as we go, then that could lead to a happier life altogether. Awesome. Now, I want to focus in the travel aspect of yes. the business. Now, where have you been that you've really enjoyed and that it incorporates your the health and wellness industry to you? I know we were talking about Hawaii before, <laughs> but where have you actually sure. been that you have enjoyed and can say, yeah. you know, this might be a recommendation for you when you're traveling? Beyond Hawaii, because I know Hawaii is very well known. Um, if you have not gone to Iceland, there is something so magical about Iceland. And the reason that I love travel so much is because it refuels my passion. When I'm there, I disconnect and so much creativity and ideas Mm -hmm. just flood into my mind because I'm not working. So I, it allows my brain to have a break and have so many creative things come into play. And then I become so excited to get home and get started. So I'm not burning out. And Iceland, the reason I love it is because it's just so much nature. I didn't anticipate the amount of nature. Mm -hmm. uh, we went, when we went, it was in the summertime, um, which was wonderful but we did the um the hot lagoons and it's just a really good relaxation drive around look at all the beautiful sights um and then in winter i actually plan to go back again for the northern lights and and like glacier lagoon for example diamond beach those mm -hmm. are big destinations for the winter time but that play oh my gosh i i equate that honestly above hawaii um it's like the it's like the winter version of hawaii in my opinion and, and you know what that that's me as well like yeah i love seeing the sights i love yeah. and for me like you said that hypnotic state is when i go to museums or a historical mm -hmm. place like going to spain or going to statue of liberty or even go to washington see dc and seeing the monuments and the smithsonian i will just sit there and my brain just goes and it, it, it it's actually relaxing to see and being on all of that and your body does take that in it has that uh a, looking for the uh, euphoria is that the yeah, word i'm looking yeah, for it is that, like that. that it actually 
So people think, oh, I need to go to the beach to relax. I'm like, well, yeah, the beach is nice to listen to the waves, but is it really making you happy? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it giving you that that mental relaxation that you like, or is it, are you like I said, uh, like uh, uh, Shannon who who went to Iceland and would marvel at you know going to the Northern Lights or going to the spa, you know. The, the, the spas, me, myself, I was saying that uh, we were talking about St. Lucia and one of the things I want to do is drive through the, the, the Piton Mountains and they have the driving volcano and you could actually, wow. which is not active and they have those mud baths there that oh, are so wow. replenishing. I mean, the, the, the mountain, the, the volcano has been dead over 200 years, but the properties in those mud baths themselves are just so relaxing, I hear, that it, it's just people just, you know, pay just to do that. Never mind go to the beach and sit in the mud baths or, or take in those, uh, those, uh, feelings or the views and stuff. I mean, just looking at those mountains behind me, like, oh my God, that's gorgeous. I want to see that. And it, you know, makes people happy. So yeah. yeah. And well, honestly, how many times can you say that you've taken a mud bath, like a natural mud bath, you know, that, I mean, I can't say that I have. Oh, I go, to, oh go to Israel, go to the Dead Sea. We're always hearing yeah. about the, the, those uh, makeup stuff where all oh, the Dead Sea is in there and this and that. Well, go yeah. float on the Dead Sea for a little bit. Yeah. You'll get the same aspect of it. So that's in Israel and stuff. So there's so, so many places around the world and here, I mean, uh, we're always talking about the, uh, the spas of New Mexico and Arizona and the desert out there. And, you know, so, so there's so much, uh, things to bring, not, not only mentally, but physically bring into your life to make yourself feel better. Yeah. That's where all, I mean, that's why health and wellness is the number one reason for the last 10 years of why people are traveling to, uh, to be able to enjoy, relax, take in, uh, even uh, participate in, in meetings or uh, different retreats at, resorts or destinations mm -hmm. and uh you know Echeverry travel does help with that so if you're out there listening we do have with retreats and I hopefully one day that uh you know Shannon and Dr. Sid and some others will get together and we'll we'll bring you a great health and wellness destination. You know once uh everybody's got their vaccines and updated with COVID we'll be out there uh working with all you to get you at least started it in making yourself feel better, which is the most important thing. If you feel great, life is great. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to working with you more, Cheryl. And I mean, you're my go to when it comes to retreats and all that, because the amount of time that people spend on planning travel is a stressor in itself. So you're you plan to go on vacation and then you're stressed because you go on the vacation and you just take the stress away from that planning process. That Thank you very hear. much. I try to let people know and I also try to let people know, you know, I'm not the cruise agent. I'm not the tour yeah. operator and I take everything and especially yes. things you don't want on vacation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't want you know, I'm a grandmother, but sometimes I don't want to travel where the kids are. Or sometimes I don't want to travel in large groups. And I just want to go to relax somewhere with my husband, especially since it's Valentine's Day month and month of love. Or or I do want, you know, we, we find what do you want, what you don't want, what what is the most important thing while you're traveling. And that, I think yeah. people overlook that so much. And if they just stop and think about it and not just, oh my God, it's so darn expensive. Well, you know, let, let's plan it out. You don't have to go tomorrow. I mean, you know, yeah. that's, that's also something to help you relax and think about and, and think about to enjoy that. Oh, I'm planning my trip. I cannot wake and it wakes you up. And it was 
tomorrow. I have one more day until I get to go to my trip or I get a one week and I, you know, and those and I start doing the cha-cha-cha because we can't wait to get out of the house. And it's true. I mean, you know, even yeah. us, I mean, it, it, it's hard, you can't, but, but at the same time, it gives you something to look forward to and it put does. a smile on your face. It does. Yeah. And I think that's another reason why people are so anxious right now, because we're used to going out and exploring and we just, you know, this, for 2020, at least people are starting, you know, to try, you can probably chime in more on the travel piece, but people are start. I mean, I'm, we're starting to plan because I got to go, I got to go on a vacation, you know, and, and, and people are traveling now, but you know, I get it. I mean, yes, the cruise industry is dead at least until 2022, but you know what? Uh, I have, we have a friend that just came back from skiing in Utah. I have people that go water skiing or, or, or they, they, they're going scuba diving. You don't have to worry about COVID because you're not near anybody. And if you are, you're in the yep. water and you're in the air and yep. you don't need a mask and you just need a mask while you're traveling on the plane. So, mm -hmm. you know, as long as you follow just a couple of steps, you could travel to the destinations that are open and they have been open for months. So it's not like yeah. we can't travel. It's just your willingness to travel. I mean, yes. understand True. myself, I cannot travel. I have underlying health issues, but until I get my vaccination, which will hopefully be in another two weeks, hey, I'm going to be out the door. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm waiting, waiting to get my passport renewed, which definitely, please, 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 I'm going to say this. If you wait, if you need a passport or renew your passport, it takes at least nine weeks to update your passport. Oh, yes, and that's God, because a lot of the passport offices have been closed and they are backed up. So check your passport. If it's going to expire less than six months, get the renewal out in the mail. Bring it to the wow. post office. Take a new picture. I can't stress that enough. Because to expedite and you cannot guarantee it, it's going to be over $400 to expedite it. And you cannot guarantee you're going to get it when you need it. So mm -hmm. please make sure you get them out. And uh, you're doing the right uh, certification for that country or state you're visiting. Because each one has their own restrictions and health. Uh, safety guidelines. So that's what they are. Because we, some, I mean, if, if you think about it, some places uh, in, in this world, if they have only two cases of COVID and you're bringing it in, can destroy the whole population of that country. Oh, yeah. So we have to really think about, you know, you know, we may not want the COVID vaccine, but make sure you get that negative test. And it's very mm -hmm. important to do so. Yeah. Shannon, um, before we say goodbye today, would you let us know if you have any upcoming events that our listeners might be interested in? I know you recently had one on Zoom uh, the other day. And are these open to anybody or are they only open to Central Florida listeners? Yeah, so great question. Um, my, I just started hosting a show on Be Well TV that's called The Well Balanced Mind and we cover mental health topics. And it's conversations just like the one that we had really bringing on guest experts in the health and wellness field and always relating it back to our mental health and well-being and insights to understanding who you are more, insights to understanding your mind more. Um, that's the only event with the, the launch of the office opening. I don't have any events for this month, but um, those episodes release every single a week and it's on YouTube on Be Well TV. You just have to search that and you can find it. Well, in the comments area, I will have all this information for our listeners as well as how to reach out to you. And please remember, uh, Shannon is also a member with me with B and I, which is Business Network International. And uh, especially uh, with over a million members worldwide with B and I, if you're looking for a great hypnotherapist or, or a pro professional coach, and I know you're listening. Shannon is a great referral partner as well. And so definitely reach out to her. Even if you're not with BNI, you know, Central Florida, if you want me to introduce you to her, please reach out to me. And also make sure you, you 
where you heard Shannon so she can give me kudos for the referral. Let her know you heard her at Talk Travel with Cheryl. And um, Shannon, I want to thank you today for coming on. Um, your primary clients are in the Central Florida area, but do you ever uh, work with people outside the state or they have to be local to visit? Uh, yeah. yeah, I do offer Zoom sessions, so you can actually do hypnotherapy over Zoom in the privacy of your own bed or your own recliner <laughs> or, or wherever is most comfortable for you. You can put your fuzzy socks on and just be comfortable in your own safe space. And uh, so I do offer uh, Zoom sessions as well for those who don't want to go out quite yet. And if you're not in the Florida, uh, Central Florida area. But uh, yes. Thank you, Shannon, so much Thank for you. Jay coming on. I will have her on again in the future. And keep, you know, comment. We want to hear your comments and feedback. Uh, if you want to know more about Shannon or any of the other guests I've been having on. Next week, I'm going to have my good friend Nancy Rodriguez on. Uh, she also owns uh, Tea and Crown out in Virginia. You may have ha heard me have Amy Mitchell on in the past, uh, who's with Houses of Windsor. And I'll be talking to her, especially about her daughter. You all know that I do we're also work with special needs and people with disabilities. And her daughter has autism. And we'll be discussing uh, travel with a, a, a child or a person with autism. Stick around for more. View our uh, recordings on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, God bless. And thank you again, Shannon, for joining me thank today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day.